Hello students, this is Professor Capco again, and I'd like to talk to you about how to deal with an X. Have you ever had a problem with an X? Just about everybody I know has, at one time or another. Um, if you're in algebra class, you probably are seeing quite a few problems with Xs. So let's talk about the best ways to deal with an X. All right, so we want to figure out how to solve our problems with an X, and I first want to start out by writing out a statement here, and you might find this controversial, but you know, you may or may not agree with this, but let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and write it out. Five is equal to five. Does everyone agree to that? Five is equal to five? It's not a trick question. Of course, 5 equals 5. What I have on the left side is equal to what's on the right side. If we were to use a, a balance, a scale, let's say it looks something like this, and on this side I had 5 pounds, or kilograms, or whatever you want to use. You can see why I'm not an art instructor. And on this side I had 5 pounds our scale would be in balance. It would be very much level. If for some reason I added, let's say, three pounds to this side, I'd wind up with eight pounds on this side, and on the right side I'd have only five pounds. So what would happen? My scale would look something like this. The five pounds would be up in the air, and the eight pounds would be down here. And our scale would be completely out of balance. Well, if we don't want it to be out of balance, what do we do? Of course, we add three pounds to the right side. And if we do that, our scale would then look in balance again. We would have eight pounds on each side. perfectly balanced. Does everyone agree with that? Likewise, if I were to take something away, let's say I took away two pounds from this side, and that would leave me six pounds on this side, eight pounds on that side. So what would happen? The side with eight pounds would go down, and the side with six pounds would be up in the air out of balance once again. Well, we can't have that. We don't want our scale to be out of balance. So to make it even, I'm going to remove two pounds from this side. So then I have six pounds on each side, and our scale is once again in balance with six pounds on each side. Just like that. You might say, Professor Kapko, what in the world does that have to do with solving a problem with an X? Well, it's showing us how we can go about solving it. Let me show you. Let's go ahead and start out with a problem. You might see a typical algebra problem might look like this. And again, I'm going to use very easy numbers, and some of you might be able to solve this in your head. That's terrific, um, but I want to do it a step at a time to show you that it works. If it works with the easy numbers, it's going to work with the hard numbers. So if we've got a problem that looks like this, x plus 3 is equal to 10, this might be a typical algebra problem, algebra problem you might have. What I suggest you do, and I suggest students do this, is first of all, we think about what do we want to solve. We want to solve for x. In other words, we want to get the x all by itself because if the x is on the left side or the right side of our equation and it's all by itself, whatever's on the other side of the equal sign is in balance and must be the exact same value, the same value as the x. So we want to get the x all by itself. So the first thing I suggest that you do is circle what you're solving for. In this case, we're solving for x. 
so I'm going to circle it. Now, there's only one variable in this problem, so it almost seems too easy to, that you might not need to solve it, might not need to circle it like that. But I want to get you in the habit of circling what you're solving for because you might see a problem later where you've got an X and a Y or an X and a Y and a Z or something like that and you might forget what you're solving for. You might have a problem that says it has an X and a Y and a Z and it might, the problem might ask you what is the value of Z. Well, you may be in a, taking a test, it might be timed, you might be nervous, it might be a final exam, and you go through all the work and you solve for X. And you forget that the question asks you to solve for Z. Well, you may have done perfect algebra and solved for X, but the question asks for the answer for Z, so you wind up getting that wrong. If on the front end you circle what you're solving for, it's going to reduce that problem. So in this case, we're, we're solving for x. So we want to get x all by itself. So what we do is everybody else has got to move out. Pretend that x gets along with nobody else, and it has to live alone. So everybody else has to move out. You ever have an x like that? All right, so the x, we need to get it by itself. We do this by doing the opposite. So in this case, I've got x plus 3 is equal to 10. So I've got x plus 3 is equal to 10. I need to get the 3 to move out. And it's got to have somewhere to go, and where it's going to go is to the other side of the equal sign. And so the way we do that is the, doing the opposite. In this case, we're adding 3 to the x. So I want to do the opposite. The opposite of addition is subtraction. So I want to subtract. I want to subtract 3 from the x from this side, subtract 3 from it. Well, if we do that and just do it to that side, our, our problem is going to be out of balance, just like when we subtracted 3 or 2 from one side of our scale. So to keep our scale in balance, we have to do the exact same thing to the other side. So we do it to the one side and we do it to the other. So it remains in balance. And that's pretty much the rule we're going to need is to whatever's on one side we're going to do, we're going to do it to the other. So I suggest, you know, writing it out like that and draw a line. This tells me that I'm doing the mathematical function. We didn't do anything to the x, so I'm just going to bring that straight down here. I've got 3 and I'm subtracting 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. You could write the zero there as a placeholder, but usually we don't need to. Um, I'm going to bring the equal sign down. And I've got 10 minus 3. 10 minus 3 is 7. So this is, looks like a solution here. I've got an x on one side equal sign all by itself, and I've got a 7 on the other side all by itself. So the value appears to be a 7. And that's probably right. But what I want you to do now is to check your work. You should always check your work. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to rewrite the problem. But I'm going to take the variable out. I had x plus 3 is equal to 10. So in place of the x, I'm going to pull that x out. And I'm going to leave an, uh, an empty box there. I'm going to leave an empty box where it was. And I'm going to label it so I know what was in there. There was an x in that box. There was an X there, so that's the X box. You can see I invented the X box. So X box plus 3 is equal to 10. All I've done here is rewrite, rewrote the original problem we had, X plus 3 is equal to 10, but instead of the X, I pull it out, and there's an empty box there. I label my box with an X. Now we need to fill something into the box because it can't remain empty. What do we want to put in there? Huh, you're right. The x is equal to 7. We found it to be a 7, so I'm going to take that 7 and I'm going to plug it in there. I'm going to plug it right in there to my x box because that's what we found the value to be. So I've got 7 plus 3. Well, 7 plus 3 is 10. And on the other side, I've got a 10. 10 equals 10, so the problem checks. So I know that my answer is correct. So we can now enter a 7 as our answer. That's how you would do it with a fundamental problem. 
Uh, I'm going to do some more videos with some more complex problems, uh, but I wanted to get you started. With this is the, the fundamental strategy we're going to use for every single one of these algebra problems where we're solving for x. So I hope you have found that helpful. Um, if you have, go ahead and leave a comment for me and let me know. Um, or if you have other types of problems you want me to solve on the video, please also leave that in the comments. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel um, so you can get updates and any new videos that come out. So I hope you all are having a great time uh, learning algebra, and um, I hope you don't have any problems with X's going forward. This is uh, Professor Capco. Have a good one.